Hey guys, welcome back. Candace here. Um, so today we're going to continue a work on a couple tropicals. Now, when I first moved the tropicals into the tropical room this year, I had the TSW. Maybe it was a TSL. No, the TSW 2000 Mars Hydro Light on it, which is a super, super powerful light with um, very high power, puts out you know, a high amount of heat. And last winter, if you remember, um, we had some issues with fungal gnats late in season, shortly after this channel had just started, probably around February, March, um, because it was before one of my trips to warm up in Florida. And so what we had to do then at that time was we were treating the fungal gnats and had to remove the bio gold fertilizer that was on everything because that was a super attracting um, food source for them. And that was where they were most common was around and under bio gold areas. Um, so we went to a non-organic fertilizer and I had to really hit those trees hard with magnesium. Um, not so long after stopping that the fertilizer and switching to the chemical, they had started to show some major nutrient deficiency issues, primarily magnesium. Um, but they only had a couple months that we had to suffer through before they were able to go outside. And, you know, they rebounded. It was fine. Um, but when I say heavy, I was having to feed them with a miracle Grow liquid fertilizer you know, very, very frequently, plus adding in extra chelated iron and magnesium. Um, this year, however, we went into the cold room, cold room, <laughs> these were not in the cold room. Take another shot, not caffeinated enough for this. This year, however, they started out going from outside to the rest area and then under that light. Um, and they had had the Osma coat placed on before moving down into that tropical tent. Um, again, now then very quickly, half of, roughly half the plants were exceptionally happy with that light. Um, they were growing ridiculously, wasn't having any issues, rich, rich, dark green color. And then I have a percentage of those plants that were like, holy crap, back it off, shut the lights off. Um, Primarily the Japonicaba was the one that literally within three days of moving under that light, it didn't um, develop like light injury burns or anything. It just revolted and started to drop a tremendous amount of leaf. Um, so I turned down the intensity some and was hoping that would help. And the Japonicaba was still like, I'm, I'm not doing this. It was at an area in that grow tent that was farthest away from that light. So the power was quite a bit less. Um, but that was going on. And then a lot of the other trees started right away having some nutrient deficiency issues. This is a poinsettia. It was a rescue poinsettia from my place of employment that after Christmas, after they decorate everything in order and waste tons of money on poinsettias, they just give them away and then, or dump them. Um, so I had taken a couple home. They probably aren't the best bonsai material. I would never probably recommend you try to if you want it's kind of one of those um let's just do it and let's just see um but they you know they have a fairly big leaf this is obviously very young um but this tree very quickly and this one doesn't like highlight anyways um but it very quickly started to show magnesium deficiency issues and iron deficiency issues and after that, then it also started showing up with some rust issues. So when our trees are weak, when they're stressed, when they're not very happy with their environment, they're way more prone to develop disease and illness. So the number one thing you can do to prevent disease and illness isn't necessarily a systemic application of something, even though I do use that, but it's keeping your tree healthy and vigorous and its own immune system, its response is generally able to um, you know, prevent a lot of those diseases and problems from occurring. Um, so this tree then was seated next to a tree that was extremely happy under the lights being the Premna. 
Um, it started putting off like it does did last year, ridiculously short internode lengths. Like the leaves just like stack on each other, it looks like. Um, and it even started flowering profusely, like huge chunks of flowering. Um, I hadn't ever really seen a Premna flower, but we're gonna do that tree next. So I was starting to hit just this tree with some extra nutritional supplement, started showing signs of rust. The Japonicaba was being bad. Um, there was a couple other trees in there that it didn't matter what I was doing with that high potent light, they were just not happy. So I took that light out and I exchanged it back and used my, um, I think it's a Spider Farm 1000 light, which they had been very happy with prior to the Mars Hydro light last year. Um, and in response then, all of the trees are happy now. The Japonicaba is growing again profusely, leaf releafing out, um, and recovering nutrient deficiencies have stopped. So I, I don't know what it exactly is with the TSW light, but the, I think it's a TSW 2000, if I did say that. But um, I, if anybody uses that light and has had success or has had issues, I would love to have a conversation about that um, down in the comments below. So we're just gonna go in and we need to remove the diseased leaves that are on this tree. Um, it has started growing back to, if you come in and you look right along the stem line here, every piece that I had cut or that had dropped when it was unhappy is already starting to leaf back. Um, so I'm just going to go in now and I wanna get rid of the diseased leaves. And then I'm going to be treating this tree and it's not going to go back in the tent for a little bit yet. Um, so let's get on with it. But it is the day before Thanksgiving. It has been ridiculously busy at work. Um, I don't know how the rest of you guys are doing around the country, but our RSV rates and our kids are horrible this year. And the influenza A is just skyrocketing in numbers and symptoms that I have not seen probably since the H1N1 outbreak some years ago. Um, I think yesterday, just in the, between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m., so in those four hours, 48 people registered to be seen then for um, influenza A symptoms. Um, and RSV, which we hadn't really been admitting many kids with anything. And these kids are needing to be admitted to higher level care facilities with the RSV. But all right, that's really it on this tree. I actually am thinking I want to take this really long piece off here and then I want to clean up the nub. But we're going to wait because it's going through some stress and we don't want to overstress it. And this is a very good photosynthesizing area. So I'm going to move on and I wanna grab the Premna now for us to work with. Um, I think I went squirrely there, but why? what I say is this was seated next to the Premna that was extremely, loves that TSW light. And the fungal issue that this tree has is highly contagious. None of the other trees wound up having issues with it, but it all happens very, very quickly. And that's why it's important, even when your trees are in an enclosed environment, to at least go look at them once a day um, to see what's going on and to make sure everything's, you know, happy. But this tree, this occurred within days. It was three days that the Japonicaba took to drop like 75% of its leaves. And the Premna then that was by this very quickly also developed this fungal issue. So I need to go in and defoliate um, some of those diseased leaves. And then we're also going to remove the blooms on that and take a look. So let me go grab that tree and change them out. So here we have the prem. Now the first thing I wanna do is remove this ridiculously happy dandelion weed that's growing in the pot that obviously also super loved the TSW light. And these generally have pain in the hiney, big roots. I 
I don't think we got any of the roots, but we got the whole planet. We'll eat those for a salad at lunchtime. All right, so next I have the, um, this is the Premna. Growing excessively. And I need to go in and remove some of these diseased leaf issue areas inside this tree. And then I will go in and spray it with a um, foliar spray. But a lot of these I think are just going to drop off in here. So we're gonna go into caffeinated mode while I remove the leaves on this tree. Um, the smell of a Premna to me smells like a house with cat pee. It is probably one of the stinkiest trees that I have in my collection when I work it. Um, but if we go in now, we can look at all these flower blooms in here and it is still profusely trying to flower everywhere, which I've not ever seen this tree do. Now, of course, I've only had this tree a couple of years. Um, it was one of, I think it was in the beginner bonsai group. Er, one of the intro workshops when I had first joined the Minnesota Bonsai Society. Um, but because this tree is otherwise so vigorous and healthy, I am at this time going to do some pruning back on this, getting rid of these flowers. And so then the energy can be redirected into that interior growth. This is such a forgiving tree species that unlike the other one that I'm not comfortable doing that work on at this point when it's in that recovery and has so few leaves, um, this is a tree that I'm very confident is going to um, recover and continue to do fine because even with developing some of that fungal issue within these, um, you know, the central core of the tree, the rest of it has continued to just grow profusely and it didn't really get anywhere else. Um, so let's go in and do some pruning at this time then on this tree. This is, I think this was the front. It's just a wacky, wacky base. Let's see, and I think that's actually our front here. Yeah. Um, obviously, every time you work with trees, between trees, to prevent the spread of fungus and disease, we're going to be sanitizing any of our tools that we use. And we're going to get out our ironwood pruners. They are opened, no longer locked and loaded. Um, yeah. So this tree is going to be well minimized, dropping those flower buds everywhere. <laughs> In my coffee too. So good thing I don't think it's poisonous. Um, so starting at the front, let's just organize back. Now granted, after it has regained some vigor within the middle of this tree, then we might make some shorter cuts later in the season. But I do want to leave some foliage on each of these branches. And because the leaves and the areas that were diseased were in the inside, we're not going to be cutting back necessarily as short as we would. Um, because the more photosynthesizing, the better recovery, more energy. But I do want to make sure we're getting these flower buds off. Let's see. One, two, three. Let's take, do we need that one? I do want to take this and this and this. Now this is not work I would necessarily be doing um, with tropicals if I was window growing for the winter um, because even if our tropicals that are window growing are growing okay, they are in an environment that isn't conducive and it's much drier. They don't have the light length that they like, the light intensity. And depending on how long your winters are, you need to make sure that they are 
um, maintaining enough energy intake to support them growing in that environment that's not their normal liking living conditions. Also by removing this oxen dominated tips on most of these branches, it's going to then activate the cytokines behind it that are in a more deactivated state when the oxen is the primary hormone used in that tree. So that should also help to tell that tree that we want it to replace those leaves that we lost within our canopy within our tree here. But the internode length on these are stacked on top of each other. It's probably another reason why it had developed mainly that um, fungal disease within the core is just because the denseness of those branches that are right there. All right, I think that's it on the Premna today. We have removed the diseased leaves, gave it a little cut back, removed that oxen dominated tip, the foliar meristem, and it's going to go, after it's treated, it's gonna go back into that tropical room then. Um, I have got to get things packed up, get them to the post office for the winning subscriber giveaway. Uh, I had been waiting for the last one to kind of respond because I wanted to make one trip um, because it's not the easiest thing to <laughs> in rural northern winter America here to just get to the post office and do those things. And they take long lunch breaks and work schedules and post office hours. So I hope you guys are having fun. Have fun with your bonsai. Um, I am interested to know if you could drop it in the comments, what are some topics that you would like to um, discuss or go over during the winter here between working with trees, um, whether that's like species profile, how to handle this type of tree, how to handle that type of tree. Um, what topics would you be interested in us learning about? together. So even if I don't have a that tree type, I'd be happy to do the research and we can go through some of that. I know some people had brought up these, the bald cypress. Um, so that is in the plan as a winter working topic that we can discuss and go through, even though I myself don't have a bald cypress. But that seems like when I work with the Dawn Redwoods, a common theme as to handling the bald cypress. So I hope you guys are having fun. Have fun with your bonsai, enjoy your Thanksgiving, and stay warm out there if you are in a cold area.